Hello, how are you? Have you ever had a question about the world? Like, what plants need to grow? Or, why sugar dissolves faster in hot water? There is a way to find the answer to these questions used by scientists. It is called the scientific method. If you will use it, you can be a scientist too. Welcome to the Science 7 class. So here, in our first module, it will expose you to the world of scientists. So how do scientists work? How do they solve problems? In most cases, scientists solve problems by making thorough investigation. This process seeks to answer questions that are essential in science guided by the scientific method. So after going through this module, you are expected to first identify the steps of a scientific method, second use the scientific method in solving problems through an experiment, and third relate scientific method in daily life. There you go. Now, may I ask you, when you are curious about a certain happening, like what breakfast that gives you more energy, or what is the fastest road from your house to school, what will you do? Hello there, I need your help. I want to find out the series of steps of a scientific method to become a scientist. Can you help me? All we have to do is you listen while I read the context to find the steps. Are you ready? Let's start! Science is a way of thinking and a way of gathering knowledge about the world that is both accurate and reliable. It is the quest to understand and improve our knowledge of the world around us and how the things in it work or why they work the way they do. The scientific method is like the roadmap that you follow to get to the destination. It is the process by which scientist is carried out as in other areas of inquiry. Science through scientific method can build on previous knowledge and develop a more sophisticated understanding of its topics of study over time. When using scientific method to carry out your own investigations, the first thing you need to do is observe, then ask questions. Just look at all the things around you. Does something make you curious? Does something seem strange to you? Do you wonder what causes something or why something happens? Have you asked yourself, why is the sky blue? What makes Suda fizzy? The possibilities for observations and questions are endless. The next scientific method will involve you to test hypotheses. Hypothesis is an educated guess. It is a preliminary answer to the question you have asked that you will test to see if it seems to be true. Keep in mind that it does not matter whether your hypothesis is right or wrong. The next step is to test your hypothesis wherein you will design and conduct an experiment. After your experiment, Make sure to record the observations and data so you will be able to analyze the results. Finally, you need to draw conclusions. The main aim is to summarize the findings of your experiment and determine whether your hypothesis is ex accepted or rejected. Did you understand the context? 
You can now write the six basic steps of a scientific method inside the box. Alright, so you're done? Alright, so we have here the six basic steps of scientific method. First is make observations. So it is making use of your senses. So use your eyes to observe. So there are tons of everyday activities that would make cool science experiments using the scientific method. A student noticed that ice melted fast in water. That is an example of making observations. What else? A student noticed that the teacher is talking. That's another observation. Okay, second step of scientific method is come up with a question. So the student's observation should lead to some sort of questions. So example, does ice melt faster in different liquids? Curiosity in what happens to the ice in liquids is a simple science experiment perfect for using the scientific method. So after you make observations, come up with a question. Okay, so that question should be, it should not be answerable by yes or no. It should be something that we can investigate okay for example this one this question does ice melt faster in different liquids so this question is can be investigated okay so question that can be investigated okay because we cannot readily directly answer it with yes or no Third step is to develop a hypothesis or prediction. So hypothesis is not simply a guess. It is an educated guess or tentative answer to a problem. So the student thinks that ice will melt faster in juice than it will in water. Okay, so this is now an example of a hypothesis. Okay, so after the student noticed that ice melted fast in water, he comes up with a question that does ice melt faster in different liquids? Then having that question, he comes up with a hypothesis which is that ice melt or ice will melt faster in juice than it will in water. Let's have another example. This question. What happens to the growth of mungo seeds if table salt was added to the soil? So this is the question. So after that question, the hypothesis is if the amount of salt added to the soil increases, then the growth of mungo seeds decreases. What have you noticed? Okay, let's proceed to the second example. Tomato seeds may grow faster in colder temperature. Hypothesis? If tomato seeds were planted in colder temperature, then the seeds will grow at a faster rate. What have you noticed? In the first statement of our hypothesis and in the second statement, we made use of the if, then the then. If, then the word then. So students, I have here some tips for you. Use if-then statement in formulating your hypothesis. Try to use increase and decrease in your hypothesis. Use this format. If I do this, then this will happen. Take note. The words I do this is inside the parenthesis that refers to the independent variable. Then the word or the words this will happen refers to the dependent variable. So in your format, it would be if followed by independent variable, then followed by dependent variable. Use this in making your hypothesis for you not to be confused. Alright, so in formulating hypothesis, there are variables that are involved. So the first one is the independent variable, the one we mentioned a while ago, and the dependent variable. So, independent variable refers to the manipulated or controlled. So, this is the one you 
manipulate. So this is the if or I do this. So you do this in your experiment. Then for the in or for the dependent variable, this is the result or this is the effect that arises from the changes in the independent variable. So this is the this will happen in the if then statement. So remember the if then statement. If I do this, then this will happen. This will happen is the dependent variable. Then the I do this is the independent variable. So let's go back to our example. So if the amount of salt added to the cell increases, so this is the one you do, so this is the independent variable, then the growth of mongo seeds decreases. So this will happen. Okay, this will happen. Growth of mongo seeds decreases. Let's proceed to the second example. If tomato seeds were planted in colder temperature, this is the independent variable. This is the what you do. You planted it in the colder, colder temperature. So, the seeds will grow at a faster rate. This will happen. Mutubo ug dali ang seeds. Okay? Kung i-plant sa colder temperature. So, ang pag-plant sa colder temperature, mauto ang independent variable. Ang pagtubo o paspa sa seeds, mao ang dependent variable. I hope you understand that. You try to answer these questions here. Okay? Formulate your hypothesis using the if-dependent. Uh, if then statement if independent variable then dependent variable okay so always remember the formula okay the format I mean you may go back to the to okay so you try to read this and answer here answer the questions you may pause, you may go back just to your discarding. Fourth step is conduct an experiment or test hypothesis. Okay, so in here, you have to do your testing of your hypothesis if it's support um, or your experiment support your hypothesis or not. So, in the example, we made a prediction that ice will melt faster in juice than in water. And now, we must test our hypothesis. We set up an experiment with a glass of juice, a glass of water, and an ice cube for each. For the best experiments, only one thing should change. And that is what we call fair test. Here, we are changing the type of liquid we use but keeping the ice cube, the temperature, and measurements of the liquid the same. If too many factors change at once, you cannot accurately state what that results are. So the liquid should be roughly the same temperatures as close as possible and measured to the same amount so we left them out to come to room temperature. This could also be tested right out of the fridge. Set up a stopwatch or set a time limit to observe the changes. So have you noticed? only one thing should change one factor okay and that is the independent variable okay then the rest you should keep the same we call them constants okay you are not going to you are not going to changed or you're not going to vary them you're going to keep them the same the same amount okay then you record and analyze the results so while doing your experiment you have to record and analyze the results so make sure to record what is happening as well as the results no changes at specific time intervals or after one set time interval when each ice cube is completely melted, add drawings if you wish at the end results. Was your prediction accurate? If it is not accurate, state your reasons. By the way, make at least three trials in your experiment. This is so the sixth step. This is the opportunity to talk about your hypothesis, your experiment, your results, and your conclusions, which is the final answer to your problem or experiment. Then, okay, we have this activity here. 
just run through that 